वेलकम एवरीवन एज यू ऑल नो दैट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट डोमेन एंड मोटिव ऑफ अ प्रोटीन ऑफ अ प्रोटीन व्हाट इज अ डोमेन एंड व्हाट इज अ मोटिव ऑफ अ प्रोटीन टू अंडरस्टैंड डोमेन एंड मोटिव यू नो देयर आर कंफ्यूजिंग वीडियोस आउट देयर जस्ट फॉर अ मोमेंट फॉरगेट एवरीथिंग एंड फोकस ऑन दिस 5 मिनट्स लेक्चर इज गोइंग टू क्लियर ऑल द डाउट्स रिगार्डिंग डोमेन एंड मोटिव to understand the domain and motif of a protein you need to know that a protein as it exists is not the way it is made right the protein as you can see are in multiple forms mostly hard forms essentially if you're looking at a person essentially looking at a protein most of the proteins they are building the different components of a cell and that's what you are visualizing but this protein formation started with amino acids and multiple amino acids are tagged together these amino acids are synthesized by translation so synthesis of amino acid is done let me show you that here these are the amino acid individual circles are individual amino acids and once the translation is complete we are ended up with a linear amino acid sequence a chain of amino acids which are connected via the peptide bond now these amino acids they don't present like a chain of amino acid altogether because they need to arrange themselves in order to solve the sufficiency problem inside the cell because the cell size is very very tiny and you need to accommodate the dna rna the proteins everything so protein need to find a way to compress its length now this primary sequence of amino acid need to be folded in order to accommodate themselves inside the cell so they require this folding and that protein folding part is something that we are not going to discuss in this particular video because that's a discussion of a different uh, video altogether but this folding requires the interaction of these amino acids from one amino acid to the neighboring amino acid it it may not be directly between amino acid number 1 or 2 it can be between amino acid number 1 with the sixth one or with the eighth one or with the ninth one these interactions uh, are different in different proteins and as a result different folded form of this same primary structure may result in different structurally different proteins and as the structure will change the function of the proteins will also change basically it is a structure that governs the function of protein and the structure is determined primarily by what by amino acid sequence that the protein carries but folding plays as very crucial role in generating a functional model from this chain of amino acid sequences so from this chain of amino acid sequences when uh, they try to interact these amino acid try to interact by hydrogen bonds in many occasions via electrostatic interactions via hydrophobic interactions all these chemical interactions will help them to build a structure that is responsible for some kind of function some kind of function either providing structural rigidity structural stability acting as an enzyme some sort of function we don't know that so from this list of amino acid sequence there are discrete regions let's say sequence number 1 to 3 or let's say sequence number 6 to 9 they may engage in sudden close proximity interaction to form discrete functional units so from 6 to 9 four amino acid they fold themselves in such a way that they become a functional unit they remain a functional unit they they can give a specific function a purpose to the it's a better to say they can give a particular purpose to the overall protein the purpose may be rigidity they can provide that on the other hand this uh, amino acid number 1 2 and 3 together they form a discrete area which can bind to dna and rna sequence specifically that's another feature 
So once they gain new features by local interaction of amino acids with each other, from the secondary structures that they form, the secondary structures like alpha helix, beta sheet, they interact to form this kind of discrete functional elements in the protein. Those discrete functional elements that are formed inside a polypeptide is known as motifs. Motif means few amino acids are there, they are forming secondary structures. So, secondary structures can be alpha helix and beta sheet. They interact themselves to provide some sort of function, purpose to the protein. That is known as a motif. But this motif lack one important feature. They cannot fold themselves. The motif cannot fold themselves. So they are not a part of the protein folding indigenously. No indigenous protein folding, but still a functional unit will be termed as motifs. On the other hand, here, if we see cases where stretches of amino acid that, that stick together, they are becoming a functional unit that can provide some function, some purpose to the protein and indigenously able to fold. If they are indigenously able to folding themselves, in that case we are call, calling them domain. So, domain consists all that is there in motif plus indigenous folding capabilities. While motif is a discrete uh, functional unit of a protein lacking folding capabilities. So, these are two lines which, sum, which sums up the, the nomenclature as well as what is domain, what is a motif. You should not synonymously use these terms. So, motif, sorry, I got totif here. A motif that is out there, a motif can be of different type. Let me write two different type of motif. Let me write here. Let's say zinc finger motif, Greek key motif. These are example of motif. Okay, helix loop, helix motif. So there are other motifs out there. Zinc finger motif largely made with beta sheets, forming beta beta barrels uh, are the proteins. Greek key motifs, example DNA binding protein, RNA binding proteins, where they are at like transcription factor 3A, for example, is a Greek key motif containing protein. So motifs. Uh, are again a part of the protein have some function and lacking the folding capabilities while if they have folding capabilities indigenous indigenous folding capabilities we will call them domains right so domain means small discrete functional elements of the proteins they are tacked together to make a 3d to make large large 3d structure of the protein so from domain this protein is actually prepared. Large 3D structure of a protein which is a fully functional protein is prepared from the domains. But both domains and motifs they formed, they are formed with the help of secondary structures like alpha helix or beta sheet, loops, all the secondary structures participate in making domains and motifs. And if you want to know the example motifs like zinc finger motif, what is zinc finger motifs, how they function, what is, what are their capabilities then you can watch my separate lecture on zinc finger motif. If you want to know more about the Greek key motif, how they look like, what are their constituent, how they function, I have a separate video on that also. You can check that one out. Okay. So that, that will clear your understanding of domain and motif with examples in your hands. Hopefully this video helps you out regarding domain and motif of proteins. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, colleagues. Subscribe to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.